Hey everybody, Arthur the Anointed here, back with uh, video number two. Now this is a uh, part two of the uh, the Revelation series that I'm doing. So if you haven't seen part one, I'm gonna do a quick little recap, but I do want you guys to go back and watch that other one. Um, before we get started, now I was just reading into the Bible and one of the verses, I can't remember the exact number, but I'll, I'll put it up on the screen. Not to pray in public so people can see you, you know, go in a room and do this in silence. So what I'm going to do right now is actually pause the video for about 60 seconds, maybe to a minute and a half. I haven't decided yet. I'm going to just go as long as this prayer goes. And that's how long the pause time is going to be. I'll put like a black screen and I want us all to pray in silence on our own. I don't want to pray in front of the camera because I'm not trying to be seen. I'm doing this stuff because... God is pressing on my heart to actually share what the actual word is. You know what I mean? So let's go ahead and take this moment and let's pray. But let's pray on our own. back uh hope what you said was powerful i know what i said was powerful so let's just get right into it now the first verse that i wanted to talk about was ephesians 6 12 for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places see the reason i wanted to make this first and uh my marker the reason I wanted to make this first is because spiritual wickedness in high places now doesn't that kind of just remind you of what's going on in today's day and age like that is <laughs> the complete story like everywhere you turn you know you you see these celebrities being devil worshippers these politics being devil worshippers. I don't even want to go into what the they do to kids and stuff like that. It's just, it's all wrong. It's definitely not against God. But another reason that I want to bring this up is also to teach us, because if you saw that last prayer that I put, or not prayer, but that last Bible verse that I put in that blackout, the second part of it said, love your neighbor. And this is why we have to love our neighbors, because we're not battling against our flesh and blood. We're battling against principalities you know rulers controllers against powers you know whatever spiritual forces of darkness the rulers of darkness of this world so like if somebody is acting nasty towards you you know what i mean or if you're getting in a fight with somebody or they're calling you out over things that are just like like what is what's up here you know what i mean like you just someone's acting a certain way towards you we need to, one, pray for them because they need it just as much as we need it. But the second thing is we need to battle that with love. We need to battle darkness with the love of God. Because that's the reason why all this stuff exists is because of demons and dark energies that are attaching to people. And a lot of times they get attached to people through the actions that they commit on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, we, we don't know what they do in their lives, you know. If... And the Bible says for us to be sober, to be vigilant, you know, get off of drugs because that opens gateways in our mind. That allows certain things to creep in and take us over. And really, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you have to willingly allow. See, this is why willing sin is so wrong. Sinning willfully is because you know what sinning causes, you know, for God's glory is our good. So when we sin willfully 
we're opening portals, we're opening gateways to darkness. And this is why we got to love them, because for the ones who don't know, for the ones who don't have the Holy Spirit, for the ones who aren't following Christ and praying to the Holy Spirit, repenting for what they've done, and also striving for better, striving to be like Jesus. Now, we're not going to be perfect. You know, we sin every day. There's so many sins that we probably commit that we don't even know about. But Jesus said, keep my father's commandments. So we can... We just need to strive and be our best, just like Jesus. Now, we're not going to be Jesus. We will never be Jesus. He was a son of God. He was sinless. He was perfect. And we'll never be like the Heavenly Father, for He is perfect. There's so many things that we don't understand. I was just saying before this that I know some things, but God, you know all things. So, you know, we just need to do our best. And this is why we can't cast stones is because we ourselves are sinners. And sometimes we just don't even know it. But yeah, I wanted to bring that up first. That way that if you're ever dealing with something and also with the Holy Spirit, you have power over this darkness. You know, this stuff means nothing to you when you're filled with the Spirit of Christ. You're only fearful of this if you're not filled with the Spirit because you know that the sword of Spirit is the Word of God. And when we have the armor of God, we're able to fight back against these dark principalities and against these dark powers so just keep that in mind and if you feel like you don't have that you know pray to God ask for the Holy Spirit to come on to you and sometimes it happens slow you know just like how the government does with us you know they kind of filter feed stuff into us through movies and TVs they make the truth a joke so that you laugh about it and you don't take it serious well God does it in has the same concept but does it in a different way because if he just drops all this you need to do this, 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 and doesn't allow you to slowly transition into his arms, we're just going to fall right back into it. So God takes his time. It's to trust God's divine timing and allow things to happen. And I got that from a, a friend at work. So trust God's divine timing and allow things to happen as he plans. You know, I just heard another thing on YouTube that when Jesus Christ died for us, right? When we have a relationship with him, we then need to die for him. But Jesus didn't die right away. No, there was a process. He went through a lot of trials, tribulations. He did a lot of teaching before all that. And then that happened. Then the Heavenly Father told him, now is the time. So all will happen in due timing. Trust me on that one. Trust the Holy Spirit on that one, not me. But I wanted to do a quick recap. So the first thing we went over last week was uh, the rider of the white horse and a bow. This is Revelation 6 2. Now, this is the Antichrist because what it says is that when Jesus comes back, he will be on a white horse, but his sword will be his tongue. It will be the word of God. Now, he comes with a bow on a white horse because it's false prophet, it's deception. And that's really what the devil does. That's what the Antichrist does. It's all about deceiving, deception, lying. And, you know, I was just taking a shower before this. And one thought that came to mind is that I used to be a really, like, pathological liar. Lie about everything and anything. Like, it was horrible. I was destroying everything, destroying relationships, destroying opportunities because I just couldn't stop lying. Well, I did stop lying. But for a long time, I just was giving in to that lying. So I firsthandly had witnessed that lying causes destruction, but the truth builds foundations. The truth builds life. And since Jesus Christ is the truth, he's the true son of God, he is then life. So, you know, we got to really have discernment and I really want to start reading over. Drop my mark. <laughs> got to stare at it for a second when it falls, you know, just like when you drop a bowl or drop something on the floor, it's got to spin first. And here, let me go ahead and get this cracked open. Okay, Revelation 6, 2. Okay. And I saw, behold, a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown that was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now, that crown part is significant because later on, it talks about how when Jesus come down, comes down, he comes down with multiple crowns, not just one. So, false prophet. You know, this is really important, this one, because it says in Matthew, again, I don't know which verse exactly. I know it's chapter 24. I want to say like verse 14. I don't know. I'll put it up, though. 
um, that when this man, when the Antichrist comes, they're going to perform magic that would deceive even the elect. And the elect are the, you know, the ones filled with the Holy Spirit. It'll deceive even the Christians. But we know Jesus will come down on a cloud. That's what it says. It'll come as in the, he will come as a thief in the night as well. So yeah, pray to the Holy Spirit that it fills you with discernment and just really pay attention. You know, all this stuff was given to us and you can see like how the Bible matches up with a lot of stuff. Like how I just said this spiritual wickedness in high places. Again, if you don't know, you know, look up Adreno Crown. I'm not going to get into it because I don't want YouTube to ban me or whatever. But look into like who these high world leaders are and look at what they do on their daily actions. You know, conspiracy theory was a word that was derived from the government. So <laughs> to conspire against, it's to build a group against, it's to come against something, you know what I mean? So they're not saying you're wrong, they're just saying you're coming against us. So definitely just start doing your research, you know? Don't just allow, ignorance is not bliss, ignorance is death. Knowledge that is given to us by God is the truth and is life. So trust that the Holy Spirit, whatever it shows you, whatever it guides you to, is trying to protect you. And when it keeps us from sin, and when it convicts our hearts of sin, is to keep our temple clean for God so God can protect us. Remember, for his glory is for our good. So when we're living in God's glory, you know, we feel like we're doing so good, not sinning this and that. This is just so God can function properly. This is just so God can do his job. So make sure that, you know, we're repenting daily, not, you know, denying ourselves daily. You know, there's a lot of stuff that we probably want in this world, but we got to cancel that self agenda when we have a relationship for Jesus. Again, he died for us, so we need to die for him. And the next one is rumors of war. Rumors of war, excuse me. Now, the rider of the red horse with a sword. Let me go into this. Revelation 6, 4, okay? And there went out another horse that was red. And power was given to him that was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another and there was given unto him a great sword. So, I mean, rumors of war. You already know what's going on in the East right now, in uh, Europe. You know, <laughs> there's a war going on day to day in the United States. Not necessarily on paper, but, you know, you got gang violence. You got so many just things happening. Hearts are cold. People not loving each other. So, this is already happening, guys. And, like... With everything going on, you know, it's only going to get worse. But when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, fear not because God takes care of us. You know, for those who give faith into Christ and move forward in Christ, we don't have to worry about that stuff. It will happen. We will go through that stuff, but we will not be in that. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Like we're going to go through it. We're going to witness it, but we're not going to be affected by it because we are allowing the Holy Spirit of God to take care of us. So just keep that in mind. And the last thing is famine, the rider of the black horse with a balance. Like if you look at the um, the artwork that I posted for the last video, you can just see them. Like the first one, it, it looks just like this arrogant dude who's powerful. The second one, it's the dude is red, I'm pretty sure. So the whole thing is just red, blood, you know, representation of death, you know, fighting, violence, red, anger. And then the rider of a black horse, black being death, you know, and he's holding a balance. Now, I wanted to talk about this balance because I think it's interesting. It says famine. The reason that he's holding a pair of balances is because that's what they're going to use to weigh the bread that you eat. That's what they're going to use to weigh how much food you get. And I, I got inspired to do all this by the Holy Spirit, yes, but the actual idea of doing it in this platform, I got from this guy named Mark the Messenger. I really hope you guys check him out. But he said, and I gotta find the verse myself, but you're gonna have to work a whole day just to feed your family. You know what I mean? Just to get a little bit of bread that's on these balances. You know what I mean? So famine's coming. And I mean, this one is already happening. It's just happening low key. Like you see all these billionaires buying farms right now and destroying farms. Like they're paying farmers that if you don't kill your own crops, if you don't get rid of the land itself, because they're receiving government subsidized funding. 
So the government's saying, if you don't destroy all these crops, well, we're going to come through with Agent Orange and we're going to kill everything ourselves. So a lot of these farmers are like, well, you guys aren't going to kill it. If anyone's going to kill it, it's going to be me. So they're being paid to destroy their land. And because it's how they feed their family, they got to do what they got to do. So this is already happening. It's just low key. Be prepared for that. But I'm um, just going to go ahead and uh, read through real quick. Third, see, ah. And when he opened the seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see it. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see, thou hurt not the oil and the wine. You know, I am going to ask the Holy Spirit just to come to me more on that, because I'm pretty sure... Like, I don't know how much a measure of wheat is, but I'm sure it's a small amount for a penny. You know what I mean? I don't know what it's referring to. I don't know the exact measurements, but basically you're not going to get a, a lot and it, you're not going to get a lot. You're going to get a little for a lot. Like you're going to have to do a lot just to get a little bit. That's what's coming to me. Now, just to finally get into the, the main course of this video, the main meal, I'll call it, is the final four seals of Revelation. Now, let's go ahead and turn our books to Matthew chapter 24, 6, okay? And, oh, I'm erasing certain parts. Oops. Handwriting, man, I need to work on my stuff. But, Matthew 24, 6, okay? And what this says is, And ye shall hear the wars and rumors of wars, and see that ye be, ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. And the reason that I wanted to put this right here is because all this stuff has to happen. See, for all these things must come to pass. So all this stuff will come to pass, but it all has to happen. It's all by design. It's really, in my mind, what I feel like is being called to me is really to bring the people back to God. It's like the... Like kind of like the last attempt for God to get as many of his children back into the kingdom of heaven. And I could be totally wrong about that, but that's just what came to my heart. So now the fourth horseman, this is death. Okay. And Revelation 6, 8 here, the fourth seal. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse. And by the way, pale um, it's not technically pale. It's not like, you know what I mean? Like off white color. No, what it is, is like this, this green color, like this, you know, like almost like the color of a zombie, like that whitish green color, like just nasty death. You know what I mean? And his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. So what comes with hell, you know, death, sorrow, famine, uh, just a lot of people are going to die and power is given unto them. Over the fourth part of the earth. So what this means, a fourth part of the earth, is that he's going to take out a fourth of the population. This one horseman, jeez, I'm racing so much. Yeah, it worked. But one fourth of the earth is going to die by just this horseman alone. Okay? And the way that it's going to happen is... It's going to kill with the sword. So again, rumors of war, war going on. So just straight death. And from what I've read too is man and man, they're not going to love each other. Men aren't going to love their neighbors anymore. And men are just going to kill each other. You know, they're going to hit them with hunger again, famine, uh, with death itself. And what was the one part? And with the beasts of the earth. So you know, the animals are going to start rebelling because you got to be careful with animals. That's, again, another co-worker, my same co-worker, actually. She had told me that something pretty profound. You know, I don't know those animals. And animals are really susceptible to spirits. So the evil forces, they're probably going to take over the spirits. And you know what? You actually see proof of this. And I'll put the Bible verse up there because when, demon, when the demons were cast out of that man by Jesus... They were like, Jesus, why have you come before the time? You know, are you going to send us to hell already? And if not, can we go in the pigs? So the Bible already gave us proof that demons can take control of animals. You know what I mean? So they're going to probably take control of animals. 
And there is one part, I believe it's in Matthew. Let me go over here. Yeah, it's in Matthew. So this one part, uh, part seven. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, so Matthew 24, 7. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. So pestilence is fatal epidemic disease especially bubonic plague oh i put it right there <laughs> see i leave all these references but i make it harder for myself <laughs> that's funny but pestilence think about that there's going to be disease there's just going to be a lot of bad stuff guys so you, but this stuff will be avoided if you put your faith in christ because that's his promise and god always comes through on his promises he told the jews that he was going to send someone to soften their heart he was going to send the messiah he was going to send the comforter and that was jesus christ and they didn't trust that in fact when he started casting out devils they called jesus the devil himself and that's going to happen i'm pretty sure john was the only one of jesus's disciples that wasn't murdered most of them were crucified so you know the devil doesn't like when we're preaching the truth because he's a liar he comes to still kill steal kill and destroy you know he wants to steal our souls kill our bodies and destroy our faith you know what i mean so we just need to have discernment and when trials and tribulations are going on that's when we need to dive deeper most people try to take command to take control when bad things are happening give your problems to god again we are his children and nowadays you see a lot of fathers and mothers not really truly taking care of their kids but there was a time at one point where mothers and fathers truly, their kids were everything. You know what I mean? Like, they made sure to provide. And that is what God does. He is both, he is the father, and he will take care of his children. So make sure that, you know, you get right with Jesus. You build a relationship with Jesus Christ and the Holy Father. And that way you can be flooded with the Holy Spirit. Because this is the way you not avoid it. Because again, we're going to go through the trials and tribulations. But this is how you're not going to have to deal with the repercussions of it. And I want to go into the fifth seal now. So Revelations 6, 9 through 11. Okay. Now, and when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. O Lord, holy and true, does that now judge does thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them. And it was said unto them that they should rest for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So what this part is referring to is that people are going to be killed for the word of God. Because if you don't get the mark of the beast... They're going to kill you. And you can't get the mark of... If you don't get the mark of the beast, you can't buy or sell. You can't trade. So, it's either get the mark of the beast, or you'll die naturally, or they'll just end up killing you. And there's a bunch of stuff. There's so many weird things, again, with the government being involved in that stuff. You guys really got to look into that and just... You know, I'm not saying any of this stuff to fear, strike fear in hearts. I'm not trying to sell with fear here. But what it is, is that when we know the truth, we can prepare it. There's a, there's a saying that if you stay prepared, you don't have to get prepared. And this prepares us. This is like our, our, our guide to be prepared, our guide to make it out of the storm. So we should take heed to what it says. In Matthew 24, 9, then they shall deliver. Yeah, this is exactly what I was just saying. Like they're going to kill you if you don't take the mark of the beast. Then shall they deliver you to up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. So Jesus is saying, if if you are a follower of me, you don't take on the mark of the beast. You, you stay faithful to me, Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. They're going to kill you. But don't worry, you're going to be sent up to me. You're going to be sent up to heaven. So if they do take your life, just proceed forward because all they can take all these demons all these devils they can take is our physical bodies guys and when we have jesus christ we live eternally our spirits will live on we will live in heaven but these bodies 
They don't matter. This is just a campground. You know, this is a passing through. And I don't know why God did all this. I don't know what the whole point of creation and everything is because I'm not God. But what I do know is that he's a God of truth and a God who keeps his promises. Whatever covenant that he created, he went through with. So just have faith and keep praying. And when things get dark, pray more. <laughs> That's all I can say. Pray more. Pray harder. Dive deeper into your faith. Like I've been talking to people recently about, you know, just a lot of this stuff. And every time I talk to them, it makes it puts conviction on my heart. Like the things that I'm telling them, am I doing that myself? Like how much am I giving to Jesus Christ? Like God gave his only begotten son. And then I thought about what God actually does. God is the creator of all things, right? He created everything, every process, every this, that, and the other, everything under the sun. That means the sun coming up is God. The moon coming up is God. Everything turning on and off, God. The fact you have water, God. The fact that you breathe, God. The fact that all your organs work for every human being in the world, God. You know what I mean? And sickness and all that, that doesn't come from God. That comes from the evil one who wants to kill, steal, and destroy. You know what I mean? So all these processes, guys, like there's so much that God does for us. And when we start to think about what can I do for God, you start to, you know, do a couple things. Like, let's say you go, you know, start giving money, but then you're like, I feel like I can do more. And then God will give you that power to do more because for his glory is for our good. Just want to throw that out there. And the last little thing that I wanted to go over for the fifth seal, because there's not too much on this part. This is like the great tribulation period. Antichrist rules, you know, devils out there, it, it's craziness. People are dying, getting chips in their hand or in their forehead or whatever. I'm not too sure. But if you hear about chips and you need to get this for identification, you know, it was just like that COVID vaccine. I'm pretty sure something crazy like 85 to 90% of people have a COVID vaccine. There's only a very small group of people who are like, uh-uh, like, no. <laughs> so, Keep that discernment. Just pray that the Holy Spirit provides you spiritual gifts of wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. And armor yourself with the armor of God. There's a helmet of salvation to protect your mind from, you know, what else, what, what is out there. You have the boots of peace. Keep walking in peace. The belt of truth. You have the, the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. You have the shield of faith to protect your faith for Jesus Christ. And you have a breastplate of righteousness so you can stand with your chest out against the dark forces. Okay? So just have faith, guys. And the reason I've been talking about this lately is because nobody knows when end of times is going to be. Jesus says that himself, that if anybody says end of times are going to be this day and this, they are not God. God is the only one who knows. God and Jesus Christ are the only ones who know. Not even the angels in heaven know. And the Bible says that. Now, the sixth seal... Okay, Revelation 6, 12, and uh, I included 13 too. But Revelation 6, 12. And I beheld when he had opened up the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. Remember, Jesus said in 24, 7, there's going to be pestilence and earthquakes. There was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, so red. And the stars of heaven fell onto earth, even as a fig tree casts her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Now, I this is not me prophesizing this, but I had this weird dream about this exact one. So I was in this dream and I was in uh, my front yard. And it was weird because the sky was black, uh, the moon or sun or whatever, I'm assuming the moon, it was pitch red. Whatever was in the sky, it was red, like just red. And... <laughs> I had checked, I knew it was weird because in the dream I had checked my phone and it said 8 a.m. in the dream. And then, so it was weird. I ended up walking and I jumped in the back of my dad's truck bed and I heard God talk to me. You're either for me. He spoke to me. He said, you're either for me or against me. What are you? And I said, my soul belongs to God. And then I woke up from the dream. So I don't know what that was. I, I really haven't questioned it. But all I know is after that day, that's actually when I started doing all this and started pressuring more forward, like pressing forward. Because I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I really don't. But I'm not going to be caught sleeping. I'm not going to be caught slipping. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, here, let's go ahead and 
move a little bit forward. So now I got Matthew 24, 29, okay? And I'm just gonna make sure, yeah, okay, cool. You know, don't wanna run out of storage. These stupid phones, what I pay for. <laughs> but uh, 29, 24, 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Oh, so this is Jesus saying, after the great tribulation, six seal opens up. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. You, you know, guys, like when it comes out of the mouth of Jesus and I watched this other video on YouTube. It was one of those shorts about this dude. He was going in on some guy saying that, uh, you know, and I don't particularly like this because I, I don't feel that Christians should be angry and arguing with people like true follower, true servants of Christ. You know what I mean? There's no reason to get angry. There's no reason to argue. But he was going in talking about how this is one of the most researched doctrines in the world. The most researched doctrine in the world. And there there have been several accounts and several witnesses and of the resurrection and of itself. Like it's actually been proven by other people, not just in the book itself, just other doctrines that are out there in this world. So when it comes out of the mouth of Jesus, and that's actually why I put this in red, is because in the Bible it's red. You know what I mean? And I feel like what that means is it's to represent the blood that Jesus shed for us. You know, he loved us so much that he died for us. And that blood is truth. So that's why I feel like the word is red. But anything that comes in red, I ain't questioning it. <laughs> I'm not going to play with it. Nothing. Just take it for what it is. Again, pray that the Holy Spirit gets sent on to you. Ask for the spiritual gifts that are needed and start learning. Like, we were created in the glory of God to glorify God. We need to do our jobs. We need to spread the word to the four corners of the earth. Let those who are hot, hot. Let those who are cold, cold. And then things will play out. You know, it's not for us to determine. That is God. God is understanding of all. We are not. And anybody who says, oh, I'm, you know, we all know a know-it-all. And we all have been the know-it-all too. And let's not act like we haven't been. But the times that we act like a know-it-all and get put in our place, man, those are humbling. So with these, let, let Jesus humble you. Let him put meekness in your soul and just take it for what it is. And the last one with the sixth seal See, I really like to refer to the Old Testament at times because the Old Testament was before Christ was born, before Jesus was born. And even people in the Old Testament were talking about this stuff, man. Like the same thing that God said was going to happen, happened before Jesus even come. And this is Joel 2.10. Joel 2.10 says, the earth shall quake. Again, that's a third thing in a row. Third thing in a row that talks about earthquakes. But... The earth shall quake before them, the heavens shall tremble, the sun and moon shall be dark, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. <laughs> like, come on, dude. And like, I have this rule. I have this personal rule with stuff like three strikes and you're out. And that's with anything like fool me one like that j cole song now i he's with jay-z and all of them so you know i'm not even gonna quote that but basically three strikes and you're out you know if you do me dirty three times like if i forgive you three times i'm still even gonna forgive you the third time because i want to hold no grudges against anyone because that ends up eating at me and i don't want to deal with that so i'm gonna forgive you but i'm not gonna hang out with you anymore i'm not gonna eat dinner with you i'm not gonna go play ball with you. I'm not going to exercise with you. None of that. No, 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 no more. I love you, but you got to get going. So anytime I hear something three times in a row, good or bad, like if it's a bad three times in a row, you're gone. If it's a good three times in a row, like God is warning me three times in a row, hey, don't do that. Or hey, do this. I'm going to listen. Just personal preference. Now, the reason that this one right here this one is pretty extensive. The seventh seal, this is where things could get heavy. I'm not gonna lie. And we're gonna go ahead and start with uh with Matthew 24, 36 through 46. And I'm gonna do my best to get I, I don't want another 55 minute video, but what I plan to do was that I'm probably gonna drop one really long video a week. 
and then like four to five small ones a week. You know what I mean? Just keep it interesting, keep it moving, keep people engaged. Cause that's what Jesus would do. He, he makes it interesting. He's got stories for everything, parables for everything. And I also like when things get straight to the point. Like I like call it whatever. I like things to be cutthroat because I don't sugar coated stuff. Sugar rots your teeth. So anything sugar coated is probably not going to be good for you. You know what I mean? And just tell it like it is. Just tell it like it is. So Matthew 36 through 46. God knows the day and the hour, okay? But of that day and the hour knoweth no man. This is what I was saying earlier. Knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying. Basically, they were sowing into their flesh. You know, they were celebrating all the time not really giving themselves to God like God had commanded, just doing whatever they pleased, right? And hey, at least they were marrying. Nowadays, people aren't even marrying. They're just hooking up with whoever. And that's another thing, you know, keep it in your pants, males and women, males and females. Keep it in your drawers because stuff, once you stop doing that stuff, you'll start having wet dreams. You'll start having demons attack you in your dreams. And that's a sign that the devil wants you back in his kingdom. You know, start focus on abstinence, start focus on celibacy. You know, dudes, retain your semen because I'm telling you guys, it's real. It is really real. Just listen, just listen because God told you. If, if your dad told you to do something, you did it. And if you didn't do it, you either got hit or you got grounded. And God kind of does the same thing. Like, he just smacks you, not physically, sometimes physically, but not physically, but he'll smack you with a nice little life lesson until you get it. So just listen. Just listen the first time and you wouldn't have to. But back to where I was. Um, and they did not know until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Now that part's important because basically what Christ is saying is, hey, God's giving you guys another second chance. Like, he's giving us a second chance here. See, nobody else knew about the flood that was coming. He's telling us now, get right with Jesus. Get a relationship with Jesus because the only way to the Heavenly Father is through the Son. So get right with Jesus. Get right with God and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And that way, when all this stuff, which is way worse than a flood of the world, you know what I mean? Like, this stuff is horrible if you start reading it on your own. It's horrible for those who aren't saved. Let me put it like that. And yeah, just get right with Jesus. Just get, that's all I got to say. Just get right with Jesus. But yeah, where was I? Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. Now watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Basically, that's saying like if someone comes in and robs you, but you know they were going to come and rob you, then you're going to defense up. You know, like in America, you're going to get your guns up, get your pit bull ready, you know, get your homies Surround the house, you know what I mean? You're not going to let someone break into your home. But when God comes, you're not going to have that notice. So this is why we need to have faith and we need to prepare prior and stay true to our faith. Stay one with our faith. So that way when he does come, we're not left in a field alone. Now, therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh, who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season. Blessed is the servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Basically preparing, like keeping your faith right. And, uh, oh man, I got some dry erase on my Bible. That's messed up. I to figure that out. But um, let's actually get into the seventh seal itself because this thing is long. Is really long. <laughs> Not even gonna lie, but we need to know this stuff. I, I don't know how many people 
you know, or actually reading and whatever. And you guys really should be on your own. Like God says, again, go into your room and pray. You know, I put the prayer up there or not the prayer. I put the Bible verse up there for you guys to see for yourself. So go and learn on your own. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Don't let me fill you because the Holy Spirit is filling me to do this. So let the Holy Spirit fill you to do whatever it is you do. All right. Now, let's start with Revelations, okay? And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. So they were dead silent for 30 minutes. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. That's why I don't know if you can see it, but I, I put a little trumpets right there. An angel offers incense. And another angel came and stood at the altar, the altar where the souls were gathered, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints, the saints, the ones that gave their lives by not accepting the mark of the beast and keeping faith with Jesus Christ upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it onto the earth. And there were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake and the seven angels which had seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound now I'm just gonna go ahead and read through this with you guys uh, if I feel the need to explain something then I'll explain it but I'm pretty sure it's gonna explain itself now the first angel sounded oh by the way by the way the FCC the Federal Communications Commission I'm pretty sure that's what it calls they say all movies TV shows and cartoons are depictions of reality there's a movie, and I think it's ironic that it's a comedy, but it's called This Is The End. As Jonah Hill, James Franco, all those guys, right? This is the end. And the reason I say it's ironic is because it is a comedy, is that because it is something very serious, it is something the truth, but that was made into a joke. Now, I say you guys should pray and then go watch This Is The End. And I know it's funny, but try to take the laughter out of it because when you see what's going on, that is what describes here. But here, let me go into it. Now, the first trumpet, the first angel sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees burnt up, all the green grass was burnt up. So what that tells me is that a third of the trees are burned up, right? It's going to be hard to breathe. There's going to be smoke everywhere. You know, there's not going to be oxygen coming from the trees to actually repair what's going on. So it's going to be hard to breathe. So everywhere you go, there's going to be probably soot, ash in the air, and it's just going to be hard to breathe. You know what I mean? So you're always going to feel like you're suffocating. Now the second trumpet, eight through nine. And the second angel sounded... And as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea, and a third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea and had life, they died. And a third part of the ships were destroyed. So whatever that third was, it became blood, like unusable, undrinkable, like blood. And the fish died, so that's a, a third of the food supply gone. Again, famine, more famine. And what else? And the ships destroy. Okay, so that no more trade. Like this is gonna be way harder to get stuff. Now the third trumpet, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters, and the name of the star is called wormwood, and the third part of the waters became wormwood, and many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. Now wormwood, uh. I know that's an actual thing. I don't know really anything about it. But what I know is that whatever comes in contact with it, it like wrecks it. So a third of the water. So a third of the fish going to be gone. A third of trade going to be gone. Uh, a third of the trees going to be gone. And a th wait, a third of the waters, a third of the trees, a third of the fish, a third of the trade. Notice threes, the Holy Trinity, the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. A lot of threes here. And I'm not saying that in terms of like angel numbers. By the way, do not look, do not follow those. Remember, when Satan was cast down from heaven, he took a third of the angels with him. So when I see angel numbers, those are the numbers of the fallen angels. 
because nowhere does it say in here there are angel numbers nowhere does it say oh this means that this means that no like it, it doesn't so when you go up and all those angel numbers those were written by somebody and notice how angel numbers are always in tie with like tarot horoscopes and all that stuff just avoid that stuff that's not what i was referring to i was referring to the holy trinity anyways <laughs> but now the fourth trumpet and the fourth angel sounded and a third part of the sun was smitten again another third and the third part of the moon and the third part of the stars so as a third part of them were darkened and the day shone not for a third part of it and the night likewise and i beheld so if like there's no sun if there's no light or darkness what is there you know it's probably going to be something like red and i beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice woe 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 to the inhabitants of earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound jeez man he's saying like man that that was just the first part of it like <laughs> three trumpets haven't even sound so these where are we at these four had already went off you know what i mean these four and it's kind of like this it's kind of in reflection because there's a first four horsemen right and then comes a great tribulation period. And then the sixth seal happens where stars are falling from the sky, sun burning out, moon turning to blood. And now in this one. So again, there's the four first right there. Like again, just like that. And then there's three major events that follow. Okay. Now the fifth trumpet. And the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star fall from the heaven onto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit, hell. So star hits it, cracks open the earth, because they say hell is in the middle of the earth. Cracks open the earth, hell opens up, right? And he opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as a smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given a power as the scorpions of the earth had power. So these locusts i'm pretty sure there's a picture online of it but these locusts like they're flying around with like scorpion tails i don't know sounds pretty grueling to me and it was commanded it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth neither any green thing neither any tree but only those men which have not the seal of god in their foreheads that's not the mark of the beast that is the holy spirit and to them it was given that they should not kill them but that they should be tormented five months of so five months on the fifth trumpet and the torment was as a torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man so like i don't know if you've ever been bitten by i've never been stung by a scorpion but i've heard if you get stung by like a baby scorpion now i live in a desert but i heard that's pretty it's pretty freaking painful like you gotta go to the hospital get all this anti-venom and all this stuff but they're not gonna die from this they're just gonna be tortured so it's like you're gonna keep getting stung by this horrible thing over and over and over but you're not gonna die like at that point you're gonna want to die but you can't and in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it see dang i hadn't even said it boom <laughs> and to those days shall men seek death and shall not find it and shall desire to die and death shall flee from them like they want to die but they can't i literally just said that before i read it man that like holy spirit is with me in this one like this is real stuff man like and that's how and like God said he implants the word, like, I've read through this, but I haven't, like, memorized this. But God puts the word into our hearts. So that was just proof of that, that it came out before it came out. And they had hair as a hair of women, and their teeth were as teeth of lions. Oh, wait, hold on, I skipped the part. And the shape of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and their heads were as it were crowns like gold and their faces were as the faces of men and they had hair as the hair of women and their teeth were as the teeth of lions and they had breastplates and it was as it were breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running into battle and they had tails like scorpions and there were stings at the end of their tail and their power was to hurt men for five months and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. Now, one woe is past, and behold, there come two 
<laughs> to woes more hereafter. Like that one is already bad. Like, hold on, Let, let's let's picture this thing real quick. Let's picture this thing real quick. So this thing has face like a man. So I'll put a little beard right there. Face like a man. You know, put a little angry face. You know what I mean? Thing sounds angry. Homeboys duped up with a chest plate. <laughs> right and it's like a horse so it's in the shape of a horse right now you want to throw some legs on this thing throw some legs right throw some legs on it thinking of a horse and homeboy's got a scorpion tail some big old wings. I don't know, that is not the best drawing, but that thing looks horrifying. <laughs> like that, that looks like an abomination. So I don't know about y'all, but I don't want to mess with that. <laughs> now, <laughs> I just have to, <laughs> that's funny. But, it, this, this whole thing is not funny, but my drawing is funny. That thing, it's just bad. I'll put a better pic, if I can find a better picture, I'll put a better picture. But the sixth trumpet and the sixth angel sounded and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great rivers Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year for to slay the third part of men. Okay, so like a fourth is already dead. Now they're coming to take another third, all right? And third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I say the horses in the vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and of jacketh and brimstone and the heads of horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouths issued fire smoke and brimstone by these by these three was the third part of men killed by the fire by the smoke by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths for their power is like their mouth and in their tails for for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. And the rest of men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorcerers, nor of their fornication, nor of their theft. So all this crap, all this bad stuff, horrible stuff is happening. Yet the people that are still alive, these are the people that are like, I'm, I'm not repenting. You know what I mean? Like, I know I, I know, I just saw this. I know I just witnessed, like, all these people dying. Uh, again, f f f I don't even know what you call that. Locust, not locust, abominable locust. But they're still fighting against God. You know what I mean? Now, here, there's a little intermission part, okay? And it says, the angel... And the seven thunders. Now this is chapter 10 and 11, verse 1 through 14, okay? So I'm going to read through it. I'm going to try and get through it quick. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven things, which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. So dang, that part's 
pretty powerful. Basically, John was about to write what the Thunders were saying, but they said, don't do that. Like, it's a surprise. They, they, they want to surprise them with it. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that there and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished, as he had declared to his servants the prophets. Oh, so basically that's saying, like, hey, I, I warned you guys, you know, like, I, I told you guys this was going to happen. Now you're going to see it happen for what it is. The sweet and bitter book. And the voice which I heard from heaven spoke unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And when I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations, tongues, and kings. The prophecy of the two witnesses. Now, there was given me a reed like unto a rod. And the angel stood saying, Rise and measure the temple of God and the altar and them that worship therein. But the court which was which is without the temple, leave out and measure it not for it is given unto the Gentiles and the holy city shall they tread under foot 40 and two months. And I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days cloaked in sackcloth. So I'm pretty sure a thousand two hundred and three score days and 42 months as the same time frame. That comes out to 1,260 days. Yeah, that, that comes out to the same amount of time. Now, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These, these have power to shut heaven that it rain not in the days of their prophecy and have power over waters to turn them to blood and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. So basically from what I'm getting from that is that these two prophets, if they be hurt or killed, like a bunch of plagues and stuff are going to happen. Now the beast of the bottomless pit. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against these two prophets. And shall overcome them and kill them. Okay, so basically, great plagues. Water's going to get turned to blood. Bunch of stuff. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and in half shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them, which saw them. And they had heard a great voice from heaven saying, come up hither. And they ascended up to a heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and a tenth part of the city fell. And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and the remnant were affrighted, and gave glory to God of heaven. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. I just wanted to read through that. Uh, I'm going to pray on this one because there's a couple parts. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I don't actually fully understand that. Like, I need to dive deeper into that and really just... Let the Holy Spirit come to me and teach me about this part. So that was chapter 10 in full and 11, 1 through 14. Now, the seventh trumpet. Okay. This is it. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in, in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord 
and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and was and art, which art was and art to come. Because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned, and the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that and that they <coughs> excuse me, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, should destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there was lightnings, voices, thunderings, earthquake, and great hail. Okay, and the very last verse I wanted to go over was Matthew 25, 1 through 2. Well, it's not the last one because another one just came to mind, and I feel like I should read it to you guys, which I'm going to. But this... The reason I brought this part up right here, circle this. The reason I put that in there, it's Matthew 25, 1 through 13, is because this is what I was talking about the whole time through this and this and this by having faith and realizing that we're going to be protected by God, realizing that with Jesus Christ, Son of God, Lord and Savior, we're going to be protected through this mess. Now, here is a parable that he gave. It's the wise and foolish virgins. Then shall take, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. Now, the five that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So basically they had oil in their lamps, but they didn't bring extra. But the wise took their oils. The wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, so they took extra oil. Now, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. And those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. And the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Truly I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of the Man come. So basically, we are the church. The people of us, my buddy said this too, like, again, the Spirit of God lives within people lives within their heart that jesus christ he is the word he is the truth he is the bridegroom and we are the church we are the wedding it's the the bondage between jesus christ and his children you know what i mean we coming us coming on to jesus now the five virgins that didn't have extra oil that's essentially like saying the five people who didn't have enough faith they ran out of faith right when he came Right before he showed up, they ran out of faith and they tried everything in their power to, to get it back. You know, I'm sorry, Lord. I'm sorry. And I think it has to do with taking the mark of the beast too. Like, I'm sorry, Lord. And he said, you know, you didn't have faith in me. You didn't listen to me. So like, you got to stay. Like, you needed to have faith. And this one is really important because you guys need, no matter what is happening, through good, through bad, through thick and through thin, we need to have faith in Jesus. Because again, what he says, he does. He is a truthful God and he keeps his promises. You know, and the Heavenly Father, we honor the Father by listening to the Son, accepting the Son as the good news, as the gift of God. And the very last verse that I want to read to you is because it kind of strikes me. It's actually the very, very, very last verse of Re Revelation. Okay, come Lord Jesus, right? This is uh, 22, 18 through 21. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. 
if any man shall add on to these things, God shall add on to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away this part of the book of life. And out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book, he which testifieth these things saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. You know, this book, it, it's saying that anyone who tries to edit this, either add or subtract or whatever, or try to manipulate it for their own, like, you're going to get hit with the worst of the worst. You're not even going to, like, you're going to be frowned upon so much that you're not even going to be let up into heaven. Even if you gave your life to Christ, if you manipulated the words of Jesus to fit your own need, then, and then is that even really the word? So, you know, guys, uh, again, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's that's really deep. You know, I kind of got a little goosebumpy, a little shaky with that part. And um, I just want to let you guys know, I appreciate you guys coming to this video. I hope you learned a lot from this. Um, really take what you learned over the last two videos. Again, this is a two part series and this is not me. You know, if the, the Holy Spirit didn't come into me, I was just baptized on July 3rd for the third time. But because I was a sinner, man, I, I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes. And there was mistakes that, you know, like I'm really not proud of at all. But one, I know that through Jesus Christ, I am forgiven. And number two, I forgive myself because if God forgives me, then I'll forgive me too. And you guys got to do the same, you know, repent for whatever it is. But when you repent, don't go back to the same actions. Don't don't keep doing the same things that put you in that problem. You know, in that story of Jesus where he casted out a demon, right? He casted the demon out of the man. And what happened was is that more demons ended up flooding into him. Not, not the one with the swine, but basically if you cast out a demon and you come back to it, seven more spirits are going to come into you. So once we're sanctified, once we're relieved of our sin, don't go back to it. You know, press forward. That's like the whole boots of peace thing. You know, keep walking through it. If you let something go, let it go. Turn the page. Don't go back to it. Because there's a reason you left it in the first place. And I'm going to end on that. You guys have a great night. God bless you all. Jesus Christ bless you all. May the Holy Spirit be with all you guys. And take care. I'm out. Arthur the Anointed.